Hello everyone and welcome to Tabor Talk. I'm your host, Michael Tabor. So, it is Sunday morning, October 20th. Not a nice day at all. It's not that it's terribly cold, although I'm sort of bundled up. Um, but anyway, um, I'm sure I'll be doing more inside though. Okay, so getting right into this. I finally saw the movie Rudy. Okay, uh, last night... Um, you couldn't even stream it off Netflix. I had to actually get the disc in the mail. All right? I have a Blu-ray player. Most people don't even have a DVD player, Blu-ray player. If they can't get it on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu, whatever, they, they don't see it. So I need to watch all these films. So I resisted seeing Rudy because, uh, you know, it's corny. It's mainstream. Who was it directed by? David... Um, What's his name? Uh, David Ass Anspell? I don't know who he is. But anyway, mainstream, kind of a feel-good sports film, underdog. You know, like a Rocky sort of film, but not as good. By the way, I love Rocky. Rocky 1. Rocky 1 was one of my favorite movies of all uh, time. Top 100, I would say. And I've seen thousands of films. So, yeah, as you know, I'm a film buff. And Rocky, you know, to be fair, Rocky 1 probably topped my top 25 maybe it's just a great movie the first one and i but you know i'm not really a big fan of those sorts of films and i think in rudy it's like just this cliche corny thing and it is i i watched it and ned Beatty's in it and who's the actor um who plays rudy let me i'm just glancing down on my phone it doesn't even say here it doesn't really matter i don't know who he is um Okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay, um, I don't really know the actor, small guy. So, so here's the story. Rudy is this little kid from uh, from Illinois, outside of Chicago, small town, and he has no. He's little. He's in stature. He's a tiny little kid. Has no athletic ability. Beginning of the movie starts out. You see him. He's like I don't know, eight, nine, ten years old. They're playing. You know, pickup game football outside, and it's freezing. You know, Chicago tackle football, and they never let Rudy be the quarterback or a running back or a receiver. He's too tiny. He's just like the center. He has a helmet on. He just hands off the ball. And even then, he's just this kid. They shove him, and like he goes, "Let me play. Let me let me go off for a pass." No, no, Rudy, you're too small. So his whole life, he's had this thing. Okay, so Rudy's dream is Notre Dame. Rudy and his father, Ned Beatty, are rabid Notre Dame fans. They watch every single game. This is, oh, by the way, this play, takes place growing up in, like, in the 60s, right? They know the whole story. So Rudy knows Newt Rockney, the whole story. He gets, like, the album, you know, the coach, win one for the Gipper, and he memorizes the whole speech. It's really incredible. And fast forward a little bit. Rudy's um, in school, not a good student either. You find out that Rudy has dyslexia. He's... he's He's learning disabled. He's not a smart kid and this and that. And he keeps saying, I want to go to Notre Dame. There's actually a scene where they have a bus trip for potential students, good students, candidates who might get into Notre Dame. Rudy's online to get on the bus. I go, no, no, kid, you, you're not smart. You're, you're like, forget about it. Forget about Notre Dame. Not everyone could go to college. Okay, fast forward. Rudy, after high school, does not you know, he's not a smart kid. He's not college material. He ends up at his father's, uh, his father's like a foreman at a steel mill. Real fucking shit job. And there is Rudy's father. What's the last name to get the last? It doesn't matter. Rudinger? Okay. The Rudinger family's brother works there. It's a steel mill. It's horrible. But anyway, Rudy's a cool kid. He's a nice kid. He's a sweetheart. And he meets this other guy named Pete. It's a childhood friend. And he loves Rudy, and on his 23rd birthday in the lunchroom, he goes, Hey, Rudy, your birthday present, it's a Notre Dame jacket, and it's sweet and touching. It's nice. Okay, so anyway, fast forward, there's a horrible accident, and his best friend Pete is killed in an explosion at the steel mill. And there it is. That's Rudy says, Fuck it. I have to live my dream. He's 23 years old, and he actually has a fiancé, too. He leaves everything. He goes, I'm going to play for Notre Dame. His father says, Kid. You're not smart, you're poor, you're not an athlete, you're little. Like, just, you can have a good life here, but the dreams, no. Rudy says no. And he has no money, gets on a bus, he's got a few dollars in his pocket. 
goes to Notre Dame and it's closed too. And he goes, I want to go to Notre Dame. I want to see, you know, anyway. So he finally, he, we, they make an exception. They go, okay, you could see, I think it's the guy, the actor, I don't know who the actor is, but it's Father, Father Kavanaugh. Father Kavanaugh thinks that Rudy wants to be a priest. You know, his friend was killed. He goes, this happens. He goes, no, 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 I want to, I want to play football. I want to play football and I want to go to, and he's like, whoa, don't know about that, man. And then they get into about his grades. He's not a good student. And then Father Kavanaugh says, listen, I'm going to pull some strings for you. I'll see, I'll get you into Holy Cross, which is across the way there, right? And then if your grades are good, like A's, like A's, A's, maybe a couple B's, after two semesters, I'll see what I could do to get you into Notre Dame. Gets in. Rudy, again, studies his ass off. He's this hard-working kid. And he's just not smart. And he has dyslexia. And then he, there's another side story. He, he makes a friend and there's a deal where he will... He's a smart kid. And he, he will make a deal. He, if Rudy, Rudy's very friendly and with boys and with, with the boys and the girls. And um, he says, if you could get me like dates, you could help me with these girls and that's there's a deal. There's a trade-off. I'll give you tutoring for free and exchange. There you go. All right. A little corny, but whatever. So... So anyway, Rudy tries, studies, works. Then, oh, and by the way, so he gets a job. He goes to Notre Dame. He just has this whole fantasy to be Notre Dame. You see him in the stadium. There's the groundskeepers, this black guy. He goes, kid, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, I just want to be here. And he goes, could I work for you? And he goes, no, no, no. That's it. I have a staff. No, and he goes, I'll work for nothing. He's like, come on, man. He goes, okay, this kid has a heart, wants to work. He goes, listen, I'll pay you minimum wage. Anyway, working there, you see Rudy gets in... In the back there, the locker room was inspired, and they get to the the locker room changing room for the workers, and he sees at the window, he sees the window when he opens it up, because Rudy is basically homeless. He has no place to stay, right? So you find out at night, Rudy sneaks in and sleeps on the cot where the groundskeeper has a little cot there because he has sciatica during the day he has to lie down there, and Rudy sits in, and the groundskeeper finds this out later, like months later. And he leaves a key and a blanket. It's so touching and sweet. So, anyway, um, Rudy applies. He's working for nothing or for minimum wage. He's studying his ass off. He's getting tutoring. And, he, and he still and he applies to, to Notre Dame. Gets the letter. You see, rejection. Still not good enough. Rudy does not give up. That's not going to stop Rudy. Again, Rudy studies for a whole semester. Rejection letter number two. That's not going to stop Rudy. He actually goes home for Christmas, sees that his fiance has left him, I think left him for his brother or something. He has a big family. Goes back and um, and continues study, studying. And now he's like a junior, right? Junior um, in, at Holy Cross and applies to Notre Dame. Rejection letter number three. He is frustrated, but he doesn't stop. Three rejection letters. He has this incredible heart. I'm sorry. I'm just glancing here. It's talking about Eddie Van Halen. Boy, I really digress here. Sorry about that. I get I get these pop ups on my screen. Eddie Van Halen's cancer. That's horrible. But anyway, so so Rudy, Rudy, Rudy continues on, and finally he's accepted to Notre Dame. Now the next thing he wants to play for the football team. Talks to the coach, this and that, and he says, "No, no, no, no. Listen, we have walk-ons. We, we, we listen. Notre Dame football is for the most athletic people. You're little. You just have no shot. You're like five seven. You're just a little kid. You want to play defensive linebacker? Come on, all right. So, eventually, you see his heart. Finally, he goes, "Okay, you made the team. You could practice with the team." Now this goes on. Now Rudy's a, now Rudy's a senior there, right? He's never played a game. By the way, he's never even gone to uh, a Notre Dame game. He's, there's a real touching scene where he tries to get in. He only has ten dollars in his pocket, and he doesn't have enough money. And there's a pan up, right? Crane shot, high bird's eye. You see it phew, pan up, and sixty thousand fans, and you see Rudy. Um, outside of the stadium walking along and hearing the crowd and he can't get in he can't even see a freaking game so anyway goes to practice every day and obviously he's the hardest working kid little kid he gets pounded and smashed and the players 
All the teammates, they love this kid. Look at this heart. Nobody has more heart than Rudy, right? The kids like him, and even the coach takes a like. They like some coach, what's his name here? Um, famous coach, doesn't matter, right? Anyway, um, the coach gets sick, and there's another. He's replaced by another dicky coach. And fast forward, it's senior year, last game. Rudy's senior now. He's never played a game. He's never even suited up. And his goal is just to be, just to go through the tunnel. Like, go through the tunnel and that stadium, just to be on the sidelines, to stand up and watch a game and maybe, maybe get in for one play. Okay. So the coach says, no, 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 no. Day before, and here's the moving part. So the players all say, listen, Rudy, well, the captain goes into his office, the coach, and goes, um, I'm going to sit this one out. Here's my jersey. Uh, I want Rudy to play. And he's like, come on, dude. You're like the best guy on the team. And he goes, no, I want Rudy in. So if that's not enough, then another guy comes in. And then another guy. And then another the whole team, they put their shirts down. We want Rudy to be able to suit up. The coach kind of goes, all right. Last game against Georgia Tech. Rudy gets the suit up. And he finally goes through the tunnel, and he's fired the fuck up. He's going number one. Right? The, the Notre Dame music? Or is that Boston? I think that's Boston. But anyway, you know what I mean. So, um, um, he it's so such a moving scene. This little kid all fired up. Number, what is it? 45, 65, all right, I'm butchering it here, whatever, it doesn't matter what his number is, so anyway, fast forward, Notre Dame's crushing, it's a big game, by the way, but they're winning like 23 to 3, and there's like a minute left, and everyone's saying, I put Rudy in, put Rudy in, he goes, no, 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 Rudy's a defensive player, the offense is on, they're going to run the clock out, and the players are all fucked, they want Rudy in, they want Rudy to play one defensive play, they have a fake play, and they throw a pass, and they score, and yes, so it's like 30 seconds left. And yes, Notre Dame gets the kickoff, and everyone starts saying, Rudy, the teammates, Rudy, 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 put him in, Coach Rudy. And then you hear the fans, 60,000 people, because there was an article two weeks ago about this little kid who's got the heart of a giant, this little, this uneducated, small, poor kid who has a heart of a giant and has the willpower. And then everyone's touched in the community that this kid, and then the fans, Rudy, Rudy, then 60,000 people, Rudy, Rudy, coach goes, okay, kickoff time, and Rudy's fired up, he's, oh, and everyone goes crazy just for one of the last plays of the game, just to be on the kickoff, so they kick off, and like 13 seconds left, Rudy's coming off the field, the coach says, no, stay in, and that's Rudy's dream, to play one play, that's his dream his whole life, defense, right, so there's Rudy, on the right, um, oh, left side, and he passes the offensive end and sacks the quarterback. Holy fuck, last play of the game. And the teammates pick up Rudy and carry him off the field. You talk about goosebumps, and wow. And there it is, and you see the um, captions here. It says, this has never happened. No, no player has been carried off and this is like 1974 i believe and there you go so i was reluctant to see it because i don't like cornball i'm a film buff but i saw this and it really it wasn't a good movie and it's cliche and you know and all that but some of those moments are powerful okay i recommend it i'm almost at 15 minutes i hope i was clear and coherent i told the story well i was a little distracted by poor eddie van halen god bless eddie van halen he's got cancer tongue i believe and I believe it has metastasized. It's not good. All right. Um, good friends, good books, and a sleepy conscience. Let me do this hand. Peace, love, and understanding here on Tabor Talk. No outline for me either. So, I mean, I had a little notes here on my phone, but that's the way it is. Okay.